Hello, this is my uh, tutorial for MicroStation. Uh, my goal from this tutorial is just to give you a, first a high-level overview about what you can do in MicroStation. And then uh, in the process of that, I'm going to show you how to do the part three from assignment uh, five. So I'll just, here's an overview of what we're going to do. First, I'm going to go through opening GeoPack and some basic uh, settings in GeoPack you can set. I'm going to show you how to get aerial imagery from a website. Uh, and actually, we I can show you that, but then we're going to use Google Earth uh, ultimately. Then we're going to trace those features on the image, find the AADT, and I'll show you a website about that. And we'll put that all together to find the clear zone. So first of all, um, Actually, we'll just go straight into Google Earth and extract that image. I have Google Earth Pro, and um, the computers at Tom Google Earth Pro is free. You can just download it. It has some extra features, which are pretty sweet. Um, if you just have the Google Earth that's on town engineering computers, then all that they have is the normal one. So here's our location. It's in between University Avenue and uh, South Dakota along US 35. And the obstruction that I'm talking about specifically is this culvert. I want to know, is this barrier that's attached sufficient? And if it is sufficient, um, or to find if it's sufficient or not, we have to determine what's the clear distance required. And to do that, we need three numbers. We need the number of vehicles going on this road per day. Also, we need the, uh, the distance of this guardrail from the road, from the traveled way. And we also need the speed of the road and also the slope of the uh, side of the road as well. And also the, the distance to this obstacle. And then that can find clear zone. Um, and I'm rambling. So let's just get into this. One pretty simple way to extract the image from this so we can put it into microstation is um, just snipping. However, we're going to need a legend because we're going to have to scale it. So I'll just go to, where is that? Scale legend. And now here's the legends down here, 123 feet, nice round number. Anyway, so now we'll use the snipping tool and I'll make sure that I get that legend inside of that snip. And I'll just go ahead and save this. I made a folder on my desktop where I can put it. Um, we'll just call that US 30, a PNG. Uh, I prefer PNG because it's not a, what you call a lossy format. It doesn't lose its resolution as opposed to a JPEG, although JPEG is fine. So I'll just open up my uh, GeoPack. It's installed already on all the computers in town engineering. But um, what you'll have to do is you'll have to create a new file. You can do that by going up here to New File, clicking that it's this white sheet. And what you can do is you can name it. I already have a Lab 6. I'll just call this also lab six. The only other thing you have to do is change the seed file. I'll change it to the English because we're working with English uh, units. And now I'll just go ahead and open that. And just wait a second. So now we're open. And the first thing we can do is draw a line. Just practice drawing a line. So going over to the left here, there is a option for place smart line. I will click that and I'll click on the screen and I can go any direction I want to. I can either do this graphically by moving around on the page or I can type into these boxes right here. So let's say I want it 50 feet to the right and five feet up. And now that's the line that I just drew. And it should be 50 feet. 
if I wanted to change like my background color of this file, you can go into preferences, workspace, and then preferences. Um, and I prefer white, um, but I can change it back to black. Black is the default. Um, so that's how you do that, workspace preferences. Also, if I wanted to, for some reason, change the units from feet to inches, or I just wanted to double check what are the units, you can go to settings, design file, and then go to working units. And I can verify, yes, my master unit is feet, my subunit are inches. And the format, I just want to have master unit. Uh, this means that instead of displaying in feet, and then inches, it will display in feet and decimal feet, which is uh, preferred. So now that I've got that, I'll just delete this line. And now I'll reference in that image that I created. So I'll go to Raster Manager, then go to File, Attach Raster, and I'll just select that image, uh, US 30 PNG. I'll do open and I'll just take all the default settings and now it'll reference in right up to zero point. And I've got that scale bar there. So what I can do is go to this tool in the tasks, go to the ones under three at the top of the task bar and then go to scale. And this I'll just place, place that scale right there. And I'll change some of the settings. I'll change the method from active scale to three points. Um, I'll just make it proportional as well. So the first, it gives me an uh, what's my input that I need down in the bottom left corner here. So it says identify element. So first click, I've identified that element. And now it prompts me to select the origin point the point to scale around. For that, I'll select the left side of the scale. So now this is the first point from which it's going to scale. And now I need to select the reference point, which is going to be the second point I scale around. So I'll go to there. And now I can, I can scale it so that I want that distance between there to be 123 feet. So I'll just type that in. 123 and then left click and it looks like we scaled the image I can verify that by drawing a smart line and I'll see if it's 123 feet it is so we successfully scaled this up so now what I can do is I can trace out these elements and by the way a shortcut to drawing this line if you'll notice here there's a letter for each of these different categories. So for these draw simple drawing tools, it's Q. So all I can do is hit Q on my keyboard, and I can either click on the option here, or just for smart line, I can press the number one. So now you can see the option there is place smart line. The prompt is for me to enter the first vertex. So I'll just place the first vertex, and then I'll go to that guardrail. And the way a smart line works is you just keep on prep. If you keep left clicking, you'll keep on placing new parts of the line. So I'll click one left click, left click, and now I'm done. So what I can do is I can right click and that will finish my line. Okay, I think another thing that I'll do is I'll trace along the edge of this road because I'm gonna want an offset. And I could also trace around a little bit from this uh, culvert. And of course, it's not the greatest thing to trace off of an aerial because there's a perspective from the, uh, the plane that shot it. Um, so if you'll notice right here how it kind of slants, that's because the photo was most likely taken from the east of this location, so it's a little distorted. Um, just a little disclaimer there. So now I can measure um, this distance. There's two ways to do that, measure the distance between the traveled way and the barrier. One way is I could just draw a line. This is 
sort of the lazy way. Um, but I, I want to build a clip directly on the line. I don't want to clip somewhere off of it. So right here you can see it's what we call, it's becoming purple and there's an X. That means that my line is snapping to that point. Snapping means the line will be going to that point. And I can change the snap settings by going to tools, no, sorry, settings, snaps, and I can select them here. Or I can take this button bar and I've got a menu. I'll just drag that up to the top there. And I'll take this multi snap because I want to snap to multiple places. So now it's snapping to any point uh, along this line. So I'll snap here. And then you'll notice that this AccuDraw, we call this little uh, the thing with the green and red um, lines, we call it AccuDraw. And you can see that my line is already snapping perpendicular to what appears to be north and south. However, the road isn't quite north and south, so I want to change this AccuDraw so it's aligned towards my line. And this is quite simple. All I can do is hit, while in this mode, I can hit the R key. And now we see a drop down in the bottom left, and I want to rotate quick. So R and then Q. And now I can align this any way I want to. I will go back along my line, and it's already snapping, so that's good. I'll left click again. And now it brings me back to being able to place the second point from my line. So I will just move this up to the second line. I can see it's 11.8 feet. So 11.8 is my Y distance. Okay, so what other information do we need? We've got Y to find the length of runout required. I've got Y and I'm gonna need to have the LA. And before we find LA though, we'll have to find the clear distance because if you remember, the, uh, the, the distance to the object is, is determined by what is the closest point to, let's say a vehicle is coming from right to left, what is the closest point on the obstacle uh, at the furthest point of the clear distance. And you remember the clear distance is a factor of speed, AADT, and um, grid. So I know that the speed is 65 miles per hour because it's a US highway. And you could get onto Google Earth and check that if you really wanted to. And I know the AADT from this website. This is a interactive web map hosted by the Iowa Department of Transportation. And I will hopefully post this on Blackboard, this Word document. So this just pulls up the whole state of Iowa, and I'll just scroll in to Ames, wait for it to load a little bit, and I appear to be south. And I'll just wait patiently for this. And my location is right about here. And I can see the AADT is 24,000. So I'm going to take that number 24,000 and my speed of 25. And then I need a slope. And unfortunately, my tutorial was going to show you how to import LiDAR data into, uh, into the software microstation. And then I could give you a cross section based off of that. But unfortunately, the version of GeoPack that I'm using has a, a glitch. And I just emailed tech support, and I'm going to try and get the newer version of it. But for now, the, the I was going to show you how to use the cross-section tool, which is pretty nifty. Basically, it would give you a, a transverse profile of the road so we could see what is the slope at each individual uh, point. Um, for lack of that, I'm just going to assume that it's four. I, I measured it earlier uh, in sort of a rough way, and I found it somewhere between three and four, but I'll just assume four. So we can go to that um, chart. What am I looking at? Um, 
So I'll just go to the last lab that we made. And yeah, so 65 to 70 miles per hour ADT, ADT greater than 6,000. And four to one, we have a 46 foot four slope because that's what it is. It's a four slope. So 46. Okay. So we'll go back to here and I want to find out what is the distance 46 feet away from the traveled way. And there's another tool up here on the top of tasks, move parallel. I want to make a copy. I want the distance to be 46. And now I'll click somewhere on the line and then click again. Okay, so now I've got this line. I'm going to change the line style to two so it's more of a dotted line. Uh, I can also change the color to red. So there's our clear zone. I'll place another line that is where the obstruction, which in this case isn't actually the culvert, but it's going to be the creek bed. And now I'll draw it. I'll do that RQ align my accu draw back there. And I will use this to determine. This is where my length of mood starts. This is where the length of runout starts for knowing how long does this thing need to be. Okay, so now we can go into the calculation for runout length.